Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn how to secure our application with Spring Security. So in last video we have saw how to implement Swagger. So let's see how we can implement here a Spring Security. So first of all let's try to load our API. So whenever we will call our get all user API here we will get all the list of data. So now we are going to secure this API. So without username and password nobody can access this api currently you can see without credential we can easily access so open the new tab and try to search maven spring boot starter security and you can open the first link so currently the version is 3.3.2 you can copy this one go to your pom.xml and go to inside the dependencies and try to paste you can remove this version now let's stop the server and try to restart our application so let's try to call that api so you can see now we are getting login screen so whenever any user will try to call our api without credential then we are going to get login screen so how we can log in here what will be happen if i will try to enter some random username and password so you can see here we are getting bad credential so in this tutorial we are going to put a static username and password and in the next video we are going to implement dynamic so we will store our username and password in our database so go to your code and you can select your base package new and you can click on class and here i am going to create a class security config so with the help of that class we are going to use the spring security and a spring framework classes that will help us to configure a spring security for our spring boot application so you can give the class name as security config and here in the package just give dot config so you can see we have created one class that class name is just security config now we have to use two annotation first annotation will be at the rate configuration so you can import a spring framework dot context dot annotation so this annotation help us to understand spring boot like it is our configuration class now we have to use another annotation that name is here enable web security and this annotation enables spring security web security and it will support and provide the spring mvc integration now we have to create a bin for the security chain so i'm just going to copy paste the code then i can easily explain so here you can see i have created a function that name is your security filter chain and the return type is here security filter chain so first of all this security filter chain here you can see i have used here annotation at the rate bin that means it is going to define the security configuration for http request and here we are going to pass http security in the function and if you see this line http dot authorize http request that means it is going to configure the request authorization and inside that we'll get each request and you can see here i am doing request match and inside that i have put slash api slash users because our api name is starting with slash api slash user that means if any request is coming with this endpoint means we are going to authenticate that request that means without credential they cannot pass and apart from that any other api like slash abc slash something if you create we can easily saying like okay you have a permission you can go that one so at this line it allow all other requests without authentication but for this line here we need authentication and after that we are using your form login with default that means we are asking to enable the form based authentication with default setting and here we are giving http basic that means it will implement the http basic authentication with default setting and at the end we are returning http dot build that means we are finalizing the configuration so this is a small spring security filter chain so if you try to just go and search on google also you can easily get this configuration from a spring document now we have restricted this api that means if anyone try to access this one it will ask you to enter the credential so where we have to enter the credential or how we can store the credential for now so let's create a another bin and here give public and type here user and detail service so here i'm going to use a class that name is user detail service and this bin will provide user detail from in memory user store 
so we are going to store the user credential in memory so let's create a user so i can give here where user equal to user dot builder and let's try to enter the username so i will say like user so this is our username and the password we can just mention password let's try to add the rules so we can use in the future so i can say here role as a user and just use dot build so this is the static data we are saving into one where and now we have to store this detail into user detail in memory so how we can do just use here return new in memory and try to pass your user so let me explain one more time here we are using user detail service to store the password in memory user detail manager so if you open this class you can see it is coming from a spring security core so we are using a spring security feature and after that we are using a user dot builder it is used to create a user with username password and the role we are giving here here we have given username here the password and here the roles and at the end we are saying like let's build it now i want to change the password i want to secure so i'm going to use here one password encoder so let's create another bin So we are using here password encoder and this bin provide a bcrypt password encoder that means we are going to use encryption so it will try to use the standard and secure way to encode the password and here we are returning bcrypt password encoder and it is used to hash the password that means we are going to enhance security by storing hash password instead of storing like just a plain text for static data we have enter username as a user and password as a password so let's try to stop our server and again restart your application let's try to access that api so here we need to enter the credential so we have given username as a user and password as password let's log in so here you can see we are getting bad credential why we are getting because if you remember here we are just entering the normal password so let's try to secure our password so what we can do just use here password encoder dot encode and enter the password stop your server again restart let's try to access that api so it is asking to enter the credential so let's try to enter here user and password is here password so you can see we are able to access our api using the credential but this credential is static so in the next video we are going to make this credential as dynamic so this is the user and this is the password and when we try to encode this password has been encoded so in next video you can easily see how we are storing the password in database so see you in next video